Hey there, Internet friends. Trevor Starkey here with another episode of Trevor Trove Gaming, my weekly Sunday show where I talk about games and uh, what I've been playing and stuff. And this week I am going to talk about what I've been playing. No full reviews or anything this time around. Uh, just kind of here are the games that have been uh, kind of taking my attention the last week. Uh, continuing on with kind of what I've been doing the last couple weeks, uh, I've been playing a little bit of Final Fantasy XIV online here and there. Um, I definitely got away from it a little bit more this week, but I hopped back into it a couple days ago and and uh, uh, am continuing to enjoy that. One of the things I love about the game is that there are so many little nods to other games in the series. Um, uh, in particular, I did a, a mission quest not too long ago that basically had an ending in the exact same kind of dialogue uh, and exchange as you had between Barrett and Dine uh, at the end of kind of Dine's story in Final Fantasy VII. Um, so many, like, just little, like, even lines were direct pulls with character names changed, but it was still um, very, uh, like, amusing to somebody with uh, kind of the, the knowledge of Final Fantasy uh, history as I have. It was, I was like, wait, was that? Oh, yep, they're just completely kind of riffing on that that storyline. It was really, uh, really a cool kind of sequence. So I love kind of the little nuggets that they put in there um, for fans of the series. And what took me away from Final Fantasy Online for a lot of the last week was Final Fantasy XII, The Zodiac Age, the HD PlayStation 4 re-release of Final Fantasy XII. Uh, which has historically been one of the low rankings in my Final Fantasy ranking of everything. There are the ones that I love, like Final Fantasy VI and IV and IX and VII. There are the kind of middle meh ones that um, that don't really, like, that aren't egregiously bad, but they aren't the top tier in my eyes either. And in that you have things like ten and... Um, uh, 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 like five and one and two and uh, and then you have the ones that I absolutely detest, um, which are the eights and the thirteens um, and twelve has kind of when when I last did this twelve fell more in the detest than uh, than appreciate and. There have been a lot of reasons for that, I'm sure, but um, what the, one of the biggest is that I could just I never cared about the story or the characters in this one, and that hasn't really changed. I, I came back and revisited it to see if it was a... Uh, maybe I just wasn't at the right place and time when I played that game uh, when it originally came out on the PlayStation 2. Um, but no, it's I don't really like the characters. They don't draw me in. They're not characters I'm interested in necessarily spending a hundred hours with and I also didn't like the combat um, the combat which felt m so much more trying to be uh, an MMO and at least the good thing about getting into Final Fantasy 14 online is that I have a better appreciation of um, the MMO kind of style uh, and and so I I am finding more enjoyment in the combat than I may have before, but I'm also just kind of rushing through the game. Um, it did, as I've mentioned in the past, uh, when I was at E3, they've added kind of a rush mode, so you can you can kind of go at two times speed or four times speed through the game, through, through combat and stuff, so I'm able to kind of grind pretty easily, pretty frequently, and just kind of rush through, which... Again, in a, in a game where the combat is so largely automated based on the gambits that you set up, that's kind of the, the core combat of Final Fantasy XII. Um, a lot of time it is just kind of me walking around, letting my guys do their hack and slash stuff for a little bit, grabbing the gear or whatever loot gets dropped, and occasionally leveling up. Um, I also really don't like the, the limitations that they put in Zodiac Age on the license system in the game. Uh, if you haven't played Final Fantasy XII, basically uh, you have to level up your your skills by kind of selecting from a board, like a checker chessboard, um, what items and, uh, you want to be able to equip. Um, so like you have to, like if, if I want to equip a specific piece of gear or use a specific cell, I have to, not only do I have to have the gear 
for the spell, I also have to have the license for it. And so I have to dedicate like license points to it. And in the original game, it was okay because basically everybody was working on the same master board, and so you could just kind of level everybody up and get them to whatever that you wanted them. So if you wanted to have like th all th all three of your party kind of super powered, you could do that. If you wanted to have um, somebody that was uh, kind of a mix of healing and attack, you could do that. Uh, in this, y there are 12 different boards, and once your character selects a board, once one of your party members selects a board, they are locked into that board um, for the game. Uh, and you can unlock, uh, uh, maybe a quarter of the way through the game, you can unlock a second board for that character, but of your six characters, um, there are 12 boards, so each character can have two boards, so it's, you're very much locked into, okay, this character is going to be this type of, of person, um, which sucked early on. It was kind of annoying early on when I wanted characters that could be better healers so that they could go into combat and also heal themselves. Uh, I was stuck with having already assigned one person my white mage and then that person wasn't in my party for a little while so I was like out of white mage and I had to just burn through a shit ton of potions so I don't like the changes they made in this game I have a, a better slightly better appreciation for the combat but the the fact that the license stuff is so restricted is frustrating um, so I don't know how eager I'll get back to that I just got I, I'm not too far past having gotten my first Esper in the game um, for those that have played it and know what that signifies, what that means, where, you, where you're at in the game. Um, so, yeah, I, I appreciate that it's a more open kind of game than than they had with 13 especially, and then certainly what, like, 15 left, like the taste that that one left in my mouth is a very kind of corridor thing at the end, but the, the beginning of 15 is admittedly a very vast wide open thing, and you can go back and do wide open stuff afterwards. So, um... I appreciate like the hunts and that kind of stuff and the side quests, but um, yeah, the story just doesn't get me, the characters don't grab me, and now the restrictions and limitations I have on my characters in combat is frustrating as well. So, boo, Final Fantasy XII, Zodiac Age. So to get away from Final Fantasy, uh, I just kind of was feeling in the mood for, I guess, a collect-a-thon, and the Lego... Harry Potter games were on sale, were on a flash sale, a Sony flash sale this last week, so I picked those up for like seven bucks or whatever, because those are two games that I never played. I like, I just happened to kind of bypass those in the Lego series of games. Um, I don't know if it was just I was kind of past my Harry Potter point, or I w wasn't dedicating a lot of time to those kinds of games when they came out. So when they got re-released last year, I gave them to my sister as like a Christmas gift because she, I figured it would be a nice little, like she, something her and her husband could play together. Um, and and yeah, it was, they were cheap enough, so I grabbed them on uh, on the flash sale. And I, f I went through in the last few days and played through and platinumed uh, Lego Harry Potter years one through four, um, which was fun. It's definitely weird being back in a, in a, in a t uh, TT games where they're not just ripping dialogue from uh, the movies and stuff, and it is kind of none of the characters talk. It's all told through like facial animations, like like it was when they started with Star Wars and stuff. Um, uh, but it's it was a nice little kind of mindless collectathon. Uh, I played a lot of that while uh, watching Westworld, um, uh, which I will talk about in TV Thursday later in the week. Um, so yeah, uh, I really enjoyed that one. Uh, I, I I'll be diving into. Uh, uh, years five through seven here before too much longer because um, yeah it's sometimes like after having played a lot of long story centric RPGs especially this year um, sometimes just a mindless collectathon is fun and uh, you know it's it's a nice way to kind of unwind so um, it served its purpose there. Uh, I've also been playing Death Squared on my Switch now that it is portable and I can just kind of throw it on my, my Switch and play it a little bit before bed, play a couple levels here and there. Um, it's nice. Uh, I'm nowhere near where I was when I was playing it on, on PlayStation, but it's just a nice little portable thing to do and, and those guys at, uh, at SMG Studios are really cool. Um, so definitely check out Death Squared. And then the last one I've been playing, uh, and I 
it was one of the ones I may have wanted to try and give a, a review of, a proper review of this week, but I just haven't put enough time into it um, because I kind of got distracted and drawn away by Collectathon. Um, but it is Kingsway, which came out this last week. It was my game of PAX East. Uh, it is a roguelike RPG, dungeon crawly kind of RPG, um, uh, all played through like Windows 98 esque OS web browsers. So, like, your world map is a window on your desktop, and your inventory is a window on your desktop. When you open items, you double click to open an item, and then you get like the parameters and the description of that item. Uh, your your the battles are like when you're going from place to place. Um, the the distance traveled is like a loading screen that uh, that loads up and battles are basically um, like spammy pop-ups that'll like um, uh, it, like oh my the the enemy I hate the most right now is like a tree slug kind of enemy and he'll pop up and he'll just kind of move around the screen and you have to like click on the browser to attack him or to defend or uh, you can try and run away or whatever special skills you've got um, and your attack it's it's like an ATB like old school Final Fantasy kind of game where um, you attack and it takes a little time for your your bar to fill back up and you can attack but you can also see kind of how the opponent's bar is filling up um, and uh, the different characters kind of all have their own different attack types and so the thing that sucks and annoys me about this tree slug thing is when it attacks um, it has two other pop-ups that kind of show up on the screen and just kind of like do that across the stream. They kind of um, uh, slide across the stream, uh, screen in opposite directions, and each one will have a little um, button prompt that says avoid. And so if you can like click both button prompts as they're moving across the screen, you avoid it and you don't get hit, uh, and you don't get any damage hit. But if you've got three other windows open or something, and you're a little overwhelmed, or you click the wrong thing and the um, that brings your your world map window forward, be, and the the to avoid prompts are kind of behind you, and you can't get to them now. Um, you get damage done really quickly, and it's a roguelike, so there's permadeath, so you die, and you basically start over in a completely new, randomly generated world map. And the the premise of the game is you're trying to get to the castle and get to the king, um, and so you go from like the the uh, westmost side of the map. Um, to the castle is going to be on the east side of the map, but you also have to kind of go and, you know, maybe um, fulfill some side quests to get to the castle uh, in the first place. When you get side quests, for example, they pop up as a little, like, um, m message prompt down here in the in the corner. It'll be like um, a little you've got mail kind of thing, and you have to go and, and do that. So it's a ton of fun. I love the game, and I, I it's it's I definitely recommend it, especially because it's only like it's it's less than ten bucks on Steam. Um, so it's definitely worth checking out. Definitely worth your time if any of this sounds interesting to you. It's it's just a ton of fun. It's right up my alley. I just haven't had a chance to put a lot of time into it. And admittedly, I say it's right up my alley, but the the permadeathness of it is very like that's I I love feeling like I'm progressing and you don't get a lot of that game. You get like you get progression through the through the game, um, but I haven't made it past like level twelve or level thirteen as my characters leveled up or something like that. And uh, and then I die and I've got almost nothing to show for it. You do collect gems for each playthrough based on I think a number of factors. Um, and then you can use those gems and spend those gems on um, new items and new benefits that you can use selecting your your next hero because um, you get like starting perks and stuff like that um, so you can use those gems for that you can use the gems to pick up to customize your your screen like you can get uh, instead of just a standard mouse you can have the mouse be um, like a sword or uh, a skeleton hand or something like that so that's kind of cool little things and because it's a very keyboard and mouse centric kind of game and there are windows all over the place um, they even will sell you uh, using this this like the the gem currency, they will even sell you uh, uh, keyboard shortcuts. Um, so it's kind of an interesting use of the game's kind of um, uh, currency. So uh, yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. I've played through a couple times, uh, died a couple times. Keep finding new things, which is fun. That's exciting. Um, there's a uh, to to keep you from just kind of grinding through the game. Uh, there's this endless shadow that will just kind of 
move from west to east, so it pushes you, it definitely pushes you to the east, um, because if you get caught in the shadow, you are facing a very uh, overwhelmingly hard enemy, and that's basically how I died the last time around, is I was trying to level up a little bit, and so the, the shadow, which was definitely kind of coming in um, and, and being very imposing, sure enough, is a is an enemy that was like a couple levels ahead of me, and just like, I managed to survive it once because I had a skill. I had leveled up and collected a skill that basically resurrected me for free, um, but then you lose that skill. Uh, and so, I like, it took me a life and a half, basically, to kill that one battle. Uh, so, it's a tough game, um, but I'm, in, I'm enjoying it, and it's definitely a lot of fun. I just don't, like, I haven't explored nearly enough of it yet and I don't know it's the kind of game I'm enjoying it I love it but I don't know if I'll ever beat it I don't know if I'll ever get to the end of a uh, a session of Kingsway and actually like get to the castle and everything because some of the stuff I've encountered in that game seems like immensely far too difficult to and and overpowering so we'll see but I'm definitely enjoying it and it's definitely worth checking out if any of this sounds appealing to you so that's what I've been playing this week let me know what you've been playing in the comments below. As always, I've been your host, Trevor Starkey, from trevortrove.com. You can follow me at SnarkyStarkey on Twitter. And until next time, from here at the Trove, treasure your friends.